Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about how to create print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. All right, so in today's video, we're going to be doing this design right here. It's a little bit different, but this one says it's a logger and it's a little bit of a play on a pregnancy announcement that might say it's a girl or it's a boy. Um, if you wanna learn how to do this design here, go ahead and stick around. So right now I am on Canva's home page and I'm gonna go ahead and start by getting a blank template. So I'm just gonna come up here to create a design. I'll click that. I'm gonna go down to the bottom where it says custom size. And from here, I'm gonna be selecting 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Um, so it's gonna pull up a blank page for me. And I do prefer to design for black just because I know black t-shirts do sell the most. So it depends if I'm designing for a t-shirt or anything else, but in this case, this would be a t-shirt. So I'm just gonna go ahead, select my blank page, go over to the left-hand corner where it says background color, and I'm just gonna select black. So now I've got my black background color. Now this is going to be a little bit of a different design. Um, so we are gonna start with some text. So I'm just gonna click anywhere on my blank ca canvas if I hit T on my keyboard, it'll pull up a text box. And then from here, I'm gonna be making a two line design and it's just gonna say in all caps, it's a, and then the bottom line will be logger. It's a logger. Um, and so here we go, here's my it's a logger. I can just click on the corner, drag it out to make it nice and big. And so now we're gonna have to pick some fonts. Now I can pick two different fonts for this to try to make it a little bit more even, but I do want them both to be nice and big. So I'm just gonna go ahead, go up to my font area, and I can go ahead and do a search just for bold. So if I search bold, there's a lot of different bold fonts I can go with. And so I might want something, you can see as I start to play with it, how I'm getting different styles. If I do something narrow like that, it's I'm gonna be able to make it really big. So it depends how narrow I want it to be. That's one that's narrow, but it's not too narrow. So let's say I was to do that one on the bottom and maybe just highlight the top line here. And maybe I want the top line to be just a little bit wider. So maybe I do something like that. So what I've got is Cerebi, Cereb, Re bold, cerebri bold on the top and anthem bold on the bottom. So I've got two different fonts here. This one being a little wider, this one being a little narrower, but it allows them to be about the same length. Now I can go ahead and take this and I want them closer together. So to do that, um, I'm gonna go up to the top where you have this little spacing arrow up and down. If I click that, I can adjust letter spacing and line spacing. So from here, I want that line spacing to go down so that these two things are pretty close to one another. So something like that. So now I've got, it's a logger and that's pretty good. I can now take this and drag it out. So it fills up most of the page, which is kind of how I want it right there. So there is my, it's a logger. And I'm gonna make sure it's got a little bit of room on all sides. Maybe I don't want it to fill the entire page because we're gonna do a little bit with it first. Whenever you're designing, it's easier to design smaller and have room around the edges. And then when you're all done, you can resize it and place it anywhere within the frame that you want it versus to design too big and then to run out of room around the sides. So always leave yourself a little bit of space around the edges just to make sure that you got everything the way you want it. And then at the end, you can go ahead and place it where you want it in the frame. So I've got my It's a Logger and I'm just gonna go ahead and download this as is right now. So we're gonna hit download. I'm gonna do a transparent background. It is a PNG and I'm just gonna hit download. And while that is downloading, I am now gonna go ahead and come up with a clipping mask that I'd like for this. I'm gonna pick a clipping mask that is gonna be beer related because this is a beer shirt, it's a lager. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side where it says elements. I am going to go up to the top and I'm just gonna go ahead and search for beer. Here we go, and I'm gonna use a photo. So I'm gonna hit see all for the photos. And I actually like this photo right here. So it's just a nice picture of beer. And I can close this down. And I'm gonna bring that over the whole thing. 
Now I do again want to make sure I've got a lot of room around it for this particular technique. If I want to see how it's lining up with the image underneath, I can go over to the top where you get this little checkered box. It says transparency. If I click there, I can bring the transparency down and it's going to allow me to see the words underneath so that I know how it's lining up. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to be taking this text and I'm going to be doing a little um, um, oof, warping of it. So I'm going to make it kind of look like it's bulging out from the tops and the bottoms. So I do want to make sure I've got enough room on the top here for that bulge and enough room on the bottom here for that bulge. So I'm not necessarily losing anything. So I do like the way that that looks right there. So I'm going to get rid of the transparency. I'm going to go up to the top. I'm just going to go ahead and retitle this at the top. I'm just going to put beer frame. And then I'm going to download this. Now, whenever I'm doing a, oh, not frame, sorry. I'm going to put beer. Oops. I'm going to put beer mask. There we go. And then I'm going to go to share. I'm going to hit download. Whenever I'm downloading a mask, I don't need it to be a transparent background. It really won't make a difference one way or another if you hit transparent background. So you can, you can choose not to, does not matter for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit download there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is jump over to PhotoP. So I'm gonna go right over to PhotoP. If you haven't used PhotoP before, really easy. It's essentially a free program that you can use. I use it primarily for text warping and for clipping masks, and I'm gonna be doing both on this video. So you don't have to create an account, you don't have to log in, totally free. You just hit the center button here that says open from computer. It's gonna pull up your downloads. So you're gonna go ahead and start by selecting your It's a Logger um, frame. So we've got our frame right here and it's gonna show the layer on the side here. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is go up to the top where it says file. I'm gonna click that. Three spaces down, you're gonna want the one that says open and place. That will pull up your downloads again, and from here you can go ahead and select your mask and go ahead and hit open. Now it should put your mask right on top so that it looks like this, okay? You can see over at the side you've got your two layers. I've got my beer mask on top and then my background layer. You want to make sure the beer mask is on top and it's the one that's highlighted because that's the one that we would be putting a mask on, so if I was doing that. Um, and actually I want to take... I want to take a step back. Let's actually delete the mask because I want to work with the text first. So if you ever put something on, you want to delete it, no problem. If you go to the layer and you were to go ahead and right click, you can go to where it says delete and it will just delete that layer and I'm right back up to my text. So I actually want to do the text warping first. So before I go ahead and put the mask on it, I'm going to warp the text. So to do that, let's go ahead, we'll go up to the top and we're gonna go to edit. And so I'm just gonna uh, select edit. I'm gonna go down from edit to where it says transform. From transform, I am gonna go over to warp. Actually, here we go, Tr free transform. No, yeah, transform, warp. It's gonna put this little box around here. And then as I come up to the top, there's some different styles. If you go to the one that says style, and you click there, right now it says none. If I click on that, it's gonna give me some different styles and it's gonna kind of warp the text for those styles. So for example, for this one, I kind of want this bulging style. So I can hit bulge and it's gonna bulge it just like that. So now it has warped the text and that's pretty cool. Now you can do this as many times as you want if you wanna play with it. So maybe I'm not sure if I want that. I can hit inflate and see what inflate looks like. That made it a little bit wider. I don't like that as much, you know, but you can play with these. The one I use a lot would be the wave one because it gives it that sort of wave look. So that's what I do with a lot of the groovy fonts. But for this particular design, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick with my bulge. So here is my bulge fonts. So now that I have this design the way I want it, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the clipping mask over the top and we're gonna see if it covers the whole thing because this is pretty bulged. Now I can adjust this, by the way, by going up to the top where you see the bend and it says bend 50%. I can make it bend more or less. So if I bring that 50% down, it's going to bring down the bulge so it's not as big, right? If I was to bring it way up, 
I could make it a huge bold. You can't even read it there. So at 100%, I can't even read it. 62, it looks pretty round. So I do want it to be readable. So I usually would do, you know, probably somewhere between 30 and 50, depending on how big I want it to be. That's 30, maybe a little bit more. That's 36. So something like that works. It gives it that good bulged look. Now I'm going to go ahead and, sorry, get my, um, get my mask to put over the top. So we'll do what we did the first time. We'll go up to the top where it says File. I'm going to go three spaces down to Open in Place. It'll pull up my downloads. I'm going to hit the beer mask again, and I'm going to hit Open. Just like before, the beer mask should be on top, and the background should be on the bottom, and the beer mask should be the one that's selected. From here, we can go to File. At the top, you're going to move over until you get to layer. So that is what four spaces over to the right. Go ahead and click on layer. And then about halfway down, it should say clipping mask. You should be able to just click on that and it should automatically create a clipping mask where it just puts the, uh, the photo kind of right inside the text. And that is all that we needed this for. And this is pretty much the design that I want. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead to the left, hit file. Oops, about halfway down, you'll see something that says export as. And so here is where you can pick what you want to export it as. Now, I always select a PNG. That is my preferred. So we'll stick with PNG and give it a sec. It's going to open up this box. Here's where you could retitle it if you wanted to. So it says it's a logger and I could put bulge. So I know format as a PNG. Um, it is still 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That's what I want. And so I can just go ahead and hit save. And this is now just going to download it. And now if I want to see what it's going to look like, I can jump right back over to my Canva page. So here I am on my Canva page. Um, I can either keep this, get rid of it. I can add a new page. I do like to add a new page when I'm working with multiple programs just so that if I made a mistake, I can go back to the original one and change it. Um, if I get rid of it, then I've kind of lost it. So if I just add a new page, really easy. I've got a new page to work with. Now what I'm gonna do is go over to the left. You've got all your tabs. You pick the tab that says Uploads. So right here, you can click Upload. You can click on Upload Files and go ahead and select the file that you just made. And I can click that and there is my design. So now it says it's a logger. Now, the idea behind this design was to do sort of a beer belly style design. So sort of like a pregnancy announcement where a woman would wear a shirt that says it's a girl or it's a boy. Imagine somebody with a beer belly and it just says it's a logger and it's just meant to be funny. So there's lots of different ways that you could go about marketing this. You could market it as more of a pregnancy announcement kind of humor. You could market it just for general beer lovers. Um, Oktoberfest is coming up, starts in September. You could market it for Oktoberfest. So any kind of you know way that you could do this, it's just meant to be a humorous design. Now the difference between this and other designs is you want this to sit lower on the shirt because it's meant to kind of go over the stomach. Most of the time when we make a design, we put the design up at the top because we want it more towards the chest. So for this one, you specifically want to bring it all the way down to the bottom, as far down to the bottom as you can. And so something like that is how I would want to save it so that now when I put it on a shirt, it's going to be down towards the bottom of the shirt. And so that is this design. It's really quick, easy to make. You can use, you know, these kinds of techniques for all sorts of things. I just wanted to throw a little bit of humor in there. Um, if you have any questions about this technique or anything else, or you have videos that you would like to see, please put it in the comment section below. I do try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. And I do try to add your videos to the list if it's something that I can make a video on. Um, if you're struggling with print on demand, don't worry, it does take a little bit of time. It is not a get rich quick or an overnight kind of thing. You really do have to have a large variety of designs up. You do have to have a lot of designs up and you do want to be on as many platforms as you can. You know, as they say, take up as much online real estate as possible. That's gonna increase your chances of making sales and making money print on demand. So go ahead, try to stick with it. If you get frustrated, just remember it takes some time and um, you can always send a message or put a, put a comment down there if you have any questions again. And I hope to see you guys again next week. 
That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.